Hello. <laughs> how about if we uh, have, have a little roundtable discussion and we talk about uh, professional tools that we use? Um, anyone? That stumbler. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Blake, we, we know that. That's, <laughs> that's just because you were head injured yesterday you said that. It's not the real Blake talking. Uh, I think it's 2002 again. <laughs> I, I, well, I'll, I'll start out. I think the, the tools we use kind of reflect how professional you are. If you are a NetStumber user, there's a lot of stuff you can get out of NetStumber. I love Insider from Medigeek. It's a great tool. It lets you see lots of things. But it's, it, it's not something that's going to, you're going to turn reports over to your, your clients. So I guess let's put them in some categories. First category, we can take a, a little swing vote here for doing uh, predictive surveys. What are your tools? Back at home. Back at home. Back at home. So, everyone, let's do it. Hands. Akal? Air Magnet? Air Magnet. Yeah. Okay. For, for so the, wait, that for was, the that was about, um, yeah. about a third of the people said Akal and about two thirds said Air Magnet. Okay. Thank you. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to do the sweep well, the, catch yeah, the all the hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Ben. Um, wait. <laughs> the, uh, so, for predictive, anyone who <coughs> used uh, the Motorola Land Planner? Land Planner. Expensive. Yeah. Right, you got one. Got one. I would love to use it more. It's just yeah. got a steep learning curve and it costs a lot of money. So, um, so that's for for predictive. Anyone use uh, anything else for predictive? WCS. WCS. WCS planner. Yeah, back in the day when I didn't have access to any real tools, I would have to use the Well, we were talking about professional tools. Well, that was a professional job. I would say the boss wouldn't buy anything, so I made do with what I had. It actually does a good job at doing a very rough magnitude of figuring out how long it might take because of it's going to maybe take 48 days. So has anyone here, after you have an Ekahau or an Air Magnet, use the built-in estimator tools inside the controllers? I have, but for a specific situation, it's uh, more been a situation where uh, a client, for whatever reason, doesn't want to do a site survey, doesn't see the value of doing a site survey but um, you need to actually do some kind of plan for where to be able to put them there. Then those free tools are often easy and quick to just get something out. Or if they've only bought 30 access points, you need to do the best effort you can, knowing what your limitations are marketing-wise. I mean, from an estimation, though, you can, get, you can get, generally speaking, just as much benefit by doing some math. I yeah. mean, the total square footage divided by you know, either number yeah. of APs or True. blah number of estimated square feet per AP, and, and there's your bomb, or there's your there's your. Hey, I know if I've got, you know, a hundred thousand square feet and only ten APs. Well, it's easy math. Go spread them. Well, to recap that, professional tools, Echo about a third, Air Magnet for pre-deployment, two thirds or so, uh, a couple on Land Planner. The internal tools, uh, we use them as a default, <coughs> kind of base, basically what I heard. So next next set of tools for uh, discovery. You're going on site, you want to find out what's in the air, what's around, what do you use I that? use survey, pro well, if, as part of my survey process, I'm doing a passive survey for rogues, so I'm just doing a general walkthrough, and I'm using Air Magnet Survey for that. Anything you want to Air Magnet Survey. Air Magnet Survey, yeah. magnet survey, survey. for that? Or, or, you know, there's a, there's a couple of different ways you can do that, right? If it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for baseline network performance, fire up OmniPeak or uh, Wi-Fi Analyzer to get yourself some sort of an understanding of how the environment's behaving. If you're talking about strictly RF visualization, then yeah, obviously, you know, the Survey Pro type of products. Um, Maybe use Insider for that discovery cycle. Well, if, if you need a five second snap of, yeah. hey, what's Cisco running in their environment? Yeah, of course. Okay. The, of course, the advantage is, like, if you're looking for rogues, I can then, within Survey Pro and probably Echohow, you can drag the slider, and so I can eliminate all those neg 90, neg 85 rogues that aren't going to be in the building, and I can look for those five or ten or a hundred that are, and then go to that area, those two rooms that's the strongest neg 40 signal or so forth, and find the rogue that way. It checks a yeah. good one that I will start with. It's easy to fire up. You can save everything that you've discovered and then download it. What was that again? Um, air check. Air check. I, I found... Yeah, Fluke Air Check. It's the it's my first go to tool now that I have one. If you don't have one, I'd recommend play with one. It has uh, it does that discovery thing and the rogue thing. And though I love Air Magnet Survey, I use it all the time. I I pull air the check. Air Check out first because <laughs> it is just it's so easy. fast. 
mean, five seconds in and you're collecting data, a minute and a half in and you have your answer. Survey will give you much better where, you know, your little slider to find out are they in the building or out, but air check's a, a quick It's one. instant, and you can save the results and analyze them later, yeah. which is pretty cool. But I think it's very important that we, we can do a survey and then we can do the implementation, but for the lot of uh, uh, people who get to do a client walkabout after all, some uh, changes will be there, and uh, like a lot of people coming in in, uh, in, uh, in the room, so uh, it's just to justify to modify uh, Okay, thanks. Next next set of tools, let's talk about uh, the actual survey process itself, doing uh, either pre-designed uh, on-site surveys, AP on a stick for some people, or uh, post-install validation surveys. And I'll just have to poke this in here while I'm, I got the camera. You might want to do a, a pre-on-site AP on a stick, but you must do a post-install validation. Yeah. If you think about it, when you're pulling cables, do you validate that that's a Cat6 cable while it's on the spool, on the parking lot, or after it's actually pulled? We need to validate what we're doing. So this category of tools set soapboxy tools off and right off. This category, set of categories is what do we use for uh, getting those heat maps, the coverage patterns, uh, whether or not we met our design goals, what tools do you use there? Uh, again, we'll start out with Ekahau, hands raised. Two, 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 three. Uh, air magnet survey. Air magnet. Got all but two, so what's that? 80, 90 percent uh, on air magnet. Uh, any recommendations on, on how you use that? Tricks, tips? Well, it's obviously a, a touchy application, especially if you load it live time on the machine you use every day. So the, the easy answer to that is virtual machine. You know, give it an environment where you, uh, where you can contain what it runs and you don't have to worry about custom drivers or, you know, all of the various things that go along with running Air Magnet in a, in a particular environment, you know, video drivers that cause it to crash or whatever. So it's, uh, it's it certainly goes a long way to saving um, um, in the field work, especially when it's crashing on technician machines or whatnot. If you have it self-contained in an environment where you can just blow it away and start over, that's obviously not doable for a lot of engineers, though. And save always, save often. Save, yeah. Mm -hmm. You will like that. Short pads. Things I've found that work that help survey work a little better is if you uh, one put it on a dedicated machine. I know you can't; not everyone can have a dedicated machine, but a dedicated machine. Two, make sure you're running an SSD and not uh, rotating media. It helps the stability immensely. In fact, after I switched, I haven't got the whole uh, BSOD issues at, at all. Get and throw a lot of RAM at it. And I like your virtual. I even virtualize it on SSD machine with a lot of RAM just to take one more layer out of the picture. Well, and, and SSD doesn't necessarily mean you gotta go out and buy an expensive hard drive. Have you ever done a survey and saving your survey work on uh, removable media? Yeah. Just save it on a flash drive or save it on an SD card or whatever in your machine. As long as wherever you're writing to doesn't rely on a spindle where you're gonna get see. shock protection setting it off and pausing it and all that fine stuff, it's gonna help immensely. Some, some of the surface, like some of the surfaces I've had to wheel a survey laptop over. You know, you're going outdoor from one building to another, and I don't want to have to shut down, particularly Survey Pro, you've got to reopen it, reset everything. You're going over to some rough terrain, so having an SSD instead of, as you said, this is a lot of, it's sort of pushing a laptop uh, hard drive. And Jim. for those of you who, who used, uh, just a, a follow on question, those, yeah, there's more of you who used Ekahal for predictive, but you didn't use it for post validation. Any comments on why the difference? Customer request air magnet because it's been the de facto standard for better or worse. It's it's not that it's the best product out there. It's just that it's the best name out there. So it's been everybody is familiar with the air magnet name. Not too many people are familiar with the Echo name. Okay, let's uh, move on now to an another category: doing uh, troubleshooting from a packet analysis standpoint. And maybe if, if you have a, a tool that you use for troubleshooting that's not packet analysis, bring that up now as well. So a couple of options here. Let's do another hand raise. For packet analysis, how many use Wireshark? And I, I'm sure we're gonna get some doubling here. Mm -hmm. Everyone uses Wireshark. Yeah. What do you use for Wireshark data capture? Air PCAP. Air PCAP? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Mac laptop, I love that I can just pick it up directly and get it in promiscuous mode. Yeah. Okay, so. With the three adapters. Oh, you have the, the yeah. Triple blendy as Devin yeah. Aiken put it out there. <laughs> so everyone uses Wireshark. That should be a, a, 
to follow on our yesterday's discussion, everyone has Wireshark, learn it. So we'll kind of table that one for the costing tools. Uh, it's to ha raise hands for OmniPeak. Yeah. About half or so. Uh, Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer. Yeah. Okay, those who didn't vote. Dan, what did you vote? I, I just stick with Wireshark, and it's strictly a cost issue for me. Uh, I can't afford it, and my employer <laughs> doesn't afford it, I guess, so, yeah. I'm well, that's the trade-off, right, right? Is, yeah. is, is dollars versus versus amount of time, and if, you, yep. if you're if you at an organization where time is, uh, or your operational expenditures are, you know, more free to be uh, to be handled with, yeah, go for it. It's mm -hmm. a great tool. Yeah. Yes. Did but, anyone try, like, case pilot on top of Wireshark? <coughs> Any other tools you use for that kind of analysis? I well, just IPA. to make a general comment about the OmniPeak. I mean, I, I have never really used OmniPeak before, but uh, as um, Wild Packets nicely for the last field day were able to give us a demo version to play around with, I must admit, I do see that there is some, some real value there in doing it. It just happens to be a tool that I can put features on top of the other one. Like in a straight out packet capture application, I think OmniPeak is the best. If you're just looking at packet <coughs> frame capture, um, Wi-Fi Analyzer does a bit more and does some analysis and so does OmniPeak now in newer versions as well, but I think Wi-Fi Analyzer is not quite as good when it comes to just straight up packet capture. Whenever you see screen grabs of frames from well, Cisco or probably other vendors, the CWNP, any of those screen grabs, they're almost, almost always from OmniPeak and I think it just displays the frame in a you know, very readable. I, and and I, I, I agree. I think OmniPeak does a better job. Plus, it does upper layer stuff where Air Magnet's very much a layer one, layer two device. Mm. But what I like when I was teaching Air Magnet classes, I'd tell people, if you're ever in the decode screen in Air Magnet, an alarm should go off in your head that says, I'm not supposed to be here, because that is <laughs> not what they're good at. And if you're using Wi-Fi Analyzer, there's a lot better place to get answers than on the screen. On the other hand, if you're an OmniPeak or Wireshark, that's all. That's what you've got, and you got to get in and run it there. So, other type of analysis tools. Someone mentioned IPA. How many uh, IPA users here? Yeah. Uh, what do you use for capture? Air PCAP. Air PCAP. Air PCAP. Yeah. Uh, one thing I noticed we had uh, Trent and Joel came down to do the Wi-Fi stress test. They were running their capture on the Air PCAP card for a while, but it was having a hard time staying up capturing all the packets. So we switched to the Mac internal NIC and fed from a Mac to IPA running in a VM uh, and worked really well. So uh, you might, if you don't have an Air PCAP card but you've got a Mac, you can pull it through that way. And uh, obviously here at uh, you know, Wireless Tech Field Day, we love the MediGeek guys and IPA is a whole new way to look and, and see what's going on. There's another tool that didn't get a mention and it's OmniPeak and Wi-Fi Analyzer are three, four, five thousand not cheap and Wireshark is obviously free but common view for Wi-Fi oh, is pretty affordable it's four or five hundred dollars which is a pretty good middle ground. Has anyone tried uh, d backing up a little bit I, I did a cut for a, a client I did the Tamosoft uh, Tamograph survey very impressed with what it did especially for doing GPS and outdoor surveys uh, it's it's an up-and-comer both for a view for Wi-Fi and for uh, surveying uh, anyone else use Tamograph at all? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty fun one to use. Any other tools you want to recommend? Not so much a recommendation, but just an observation and a um, thing to be careful of. I know that when you use the built-in, you know, Cisco WCS, and you're looking at the floor plans and the heat maps, one thing I, um, depending on who built the maps and how much time got put into doing the walls and all of that, it's amazing how some people will look at the graphical interpretation of what's going on in the RF environment and believe in it. Yeah. Unquestioningly. So, like it actually you know, if, is what a client will see. Yes, and if there's a little bit of a white spot where, you know, there's no coverage there and, you know, get all freaked out about it. And I, I describe it as functional eye candy. It gives you a ballpark sense of what's going on, but if it's something that you're making decisions on, you better go there and verify it with something else or use some other mechanism. Even if you're just looking at what the APC or a specific client remotely, but just to use that graphic to actually make decisions and come to conclusions, you're just kidding yourself. Well, th so there's two points there. The first of which is 
we all need more than one tool. The second of which is know your tools and know their limitations. Yes. Right? Not every tool is going to fit every job, and every tool is going to have their own strengths and weaknesses. And whether whether you prefer one brand or one product or whatever over another, you should at least be aware of what the differences in those tools are so that when somebody comes to you and says, uh, you know, I, I like Wireshark, but I use OmniPeak because I, I can get X, Y, and Z data out of it, you're, you're not fighting with them about you know the relevance of the data. You understand that one does something better than the others, much like WCS or predictive viewing software or planning applications. If you use the wrong tool for the wrong job, you're going to get the wrong deployment. I think one more tool in terms of packet capture that people frequently forget is that a lot of manufacturers give you the ability to pull the data directly off the APs. And that's very useful from seeing the AP point of view of what data is going through and being able to decode even NATO 2 and X streams going through the, the access point. Yeah. Well, I think we're out of time, so we'll wrap this one up. Uh, in, if you, any of the people watching or want to talk about it, any of the delegates here, I'm sure they'll be glad to answer Twitter questions or email questions if you want to keep this thread going. So thanks for watching. <laughs>